Welcome to our Hall of Fame celebration. My name is Shalise Connors. I'm the Director of Athletics here at Texas Women's University. It is my distinct honor to begin this evening's festivities, our ninth TWU Intercollegiate Athletics Hall of Fame Banquet and Induction Ceremony. As we all know, tonight is very special. We are remembering accomplishments from the past, reliving our history, and honoring Jamie Ingram, Teresa Flores, and our first team of distinction, the 1978-79 softball team. We are very pleased to have some special guests in the room with us this evening. I'm going to introduce them before we get our dinner started. Would you please welcome TW Chancellor and President, Dr. Ann Stewart. Associate Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences and the Chair of the Mathematics and Computer Science Department and our Faculty Athletics Representative, Dr. Don Edwards and his wife, Dr. Pat Edwards, and a former member of the TW Board of Regents, Ken Ingram. Welcome, Ken. And this truly is a Hall of Fame weekend. I have to tell you a little story because just yesterday in this very building, there was a new class of outstanding women who were inducted into the state's Texas Women's Hall of Fame, which we are the home for, for the state of Texas. Governor Rick Perry and his wife Anita were here yesterday morning, and it is my distinct pleasure to introduce one of our very own who was inducted into that prestigious hall. Would you please welcome a TW alum, the executive director of the TW Leadership Institute, retired Air Force Major General Mary Saunders. I couldn't pass up my first public opportunity to congratulate you, Mary. I'd also like to recognize um, the current Hall of Fame members who are with us, so if you will stand when I call your name. From the class of 1995, Diane Baker. From the class of 1997 and a member of tonight's Team of Distinction, Joe Coon. From the class of 1999, and also a member of tonight's Team of Distinction, Missy Mapes. From the class of 2008, Dolores Copeland. And from the class of 2008, Ken Locker. Thank you very much. At this time, I would like to recognize the Hall of Fame Committee, which organized this wonderful event. So would you stand when I call your name? The student athlete representative who competes for the Pioneer soccer team, Leah Kuehl. Our assistant volleyball coach, Todd Lyles. Assistant Director of Athletics for Sports Information, Naveen Bopana. <laughs> Director of Conference Services, David Sweeten. <laughs> Student Life Development Officer, Robin Johnson Piper. <laughs> Professor Emeritus of Business and Economics from the TW School of Management and the University of Bum I I'm just going to struggle on that word. Um, Bud's person, Dr. Daryl Bowles. A TW Hall of Famer, former softball coach, and a TW Distinguished Alumna, Diane Baker. And the Cornaro Professor of Kinesiology, one of the co-founders of the TW Hall of Fame, Dr. Betty Myers. Director of Alumni Relations, Ann Scott, was also on our committee. She could not be with us this evening. But now, to officially welcome you, would you please welcome again our Chancellor and President to come to the podium, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Ann Stewart.
an enthusiastic geek you are, which speaks to the spirit of athletics and to this wonderful event that you're having tonight. You know, when I came here, um, it was the first time that I really had been involved in athletics at the level of administration. Um, in my other positions, I have not had interaction with that. And if there's anything that I have learned about Texas Women's University and athletics, it's what the meaning of student athletes is. I'm so proud to be involved in a program where these young people put athletics where they are competitive and they are winning and they are good at what they do, and that carries over into the classroom and they are equally good there, equally as dedicated. Sports was never my thing because I didn't want to do anything when anyone would push me or hit me or throw something at me. So it would not have been what I would have thought. But I admire you. When I see the energy and the dedication and the spirit and the excitement that you generate in your sport, whether it's softball or and I can't wait to see that field tomorrow. Has you've already seen it, Pink? Have, have they people have seen it? Pink? I can't wait. The spirit that you have in uh, soccer and the fact that you play volleyball. I play beach volleyball when the whole goal was to have the young boy that you wanted to attract. Uh, notice you in that bathing suit that you had on that day. Not like what you thought. Uh, and wow, am I envious and admirable of you. I'm honored to be with you tonight. I'm honored to be part of what you do. I admire you and I congratulate you tonight for this wonderful event and for the new honors. At this time, to give our invocation, please welcome TW Gymnastics student athlete Sierra Maradiaga. Please bow your heads and join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we invite you to join us tonight as we celebrate the accomplishments of these former TW student athletes. May this time be glorifying to you. Thank you for the blessings you have provided us, both as an athletic program and as individuals. Thank you for the freedom we have in this great nation to succeed as women in athletics and in academics. For the hard work and dedication of, this softball, of these softball standouts to be inducted tonight, we thank you, Jesus, and we pray that their success continue to inspire greatness in the current TWU pioneers. And now, Holy Father, we ask that you would bless the food that we are about to eat, as well as the people who have prepared it for our banquet tonight. We pray that you give us strength to do what is right and succeed in your gracious name. Amen. Enjoy dinner. We're at the Hall of Fame for the most recent class of 2008. To give the opening remarks, would you please welcome Mr. Ken Locker. Thank you very much. Uh, continue eating if you haven't finished. Uh, Joe, do they, you want some more dessert? I know you always, you always like to, but then, you know, uh, Dr. Myers always used to steal it from you, so I have a chance to do that. Uh, thank you very much. I'm very humbled to be asked to do opening remarks. Um, what a great place. Congratulations to the winners, the Hall of Fame. I can't believe it's been four years. We should do this every decade. That's that higher math I learned at North Texas. Yeah. Um, so, but first I'd like to pay homage and respect to the late Dr. Lyle and Kitty McGee and Betsy Pandy and thank Joe Kuhn and Dr. Myers for taking me in as a 20-year-old, 21-year-old rookie and opening your house to me. For a guy to be accepted in the physical education department in 1974, that was that was big, <laughs> really big. So that was that was good, and I appreciate being here. You know, the the issue we have now there's an election coming up 
uh, fairly soon and lots of debates. And I didn't think you'd have this Hall of Fame banquet because you'd have to delay it till after the elections. So, but obviously uh, you're progressive. But today on CNN, they decided they would uh, they'd just stop all the debates and they would just have a fishing contest. <laughs> and so each party would take their candidates up to the northern part of Alaska and have an ice fishing contest. It's a three-day event. Whoever caught the most fish in three days would be elected president of the United States. So the, the first, well, that's just easier, isn't it? Except they couldn't go to the Alaska pipeline because oh, that's another story. Anyway, so the first day one of the candidates came in with 25 fish and the other candidate had zero. And the next day, the one candidate was up to 50 fish and the other candidate had zero. And so the other candidate's camp said, you know, something's wrong here. I think they're cheating. And so tomorrow we're not going to fish, we're just going to follow them. So the next day, the one candidate went out and started fishing and they snuck through the woods and got through the woods and see, see, I know they were cheating. They're cutting holes in the ice. <laughs> But for the, uh, the two Hall of Fame winners, I don't think it'll apply to uh, the team of the decade, softball, fantastic team. But just so you know, there's a benefit of being in the Hall of Fame, is because you will have a free round of golf at the TW, TW Golf Course, and Shalise will be your caddy. <laughs> and, and four years ago, she said, you want to, yes, I hadn't played you know, since I was a student here, and they've improved the course, it's really nice. So I'm playing and I'm, I'm not doing very well and I was getting irritated and I said a few words that were four letter words like gosh <laughs> and other words. And, and finally I just had it with Shalise and I said, Shalise, would you stop looking at your watch? She said, Ken, that's not a watch, that's a compass. I need to find your ball. <laughs> So about hole 17, over by, I think the lake is still there, I finally turned to her and I said, you know, I think I'll just jump in the water and drown myself. And Shalise said, do you really think you can keep your head down that long? <laughs> anyway, this is the night for the Hall of Famers. Thanks for having me here and uh, congratulations. Thank you so much, Ken. And Jamie and Teresa. We're driving a cart. I'm not walking you guys. <laughs> well, now it is time to formally induct our honorees. I know, the, the part you've all been waiting for, right? The TW Athletics Hall of Fame was created in 1992 so that the university could recognize and honor former student athletes, coaches, administrators, and others who have excelled as representatives of Texas Women's University and who have brought honor to the athletics program. It is intended that the Athletics Hall of Fame emphasize excellence in athletics, coupled with sportsmanship, character, and integrity. Tonight, we are inducting two former student athletes and our first team of distinction. The Hall of Fame committee established this new category for teams which have distinguished themselves through exceptional accomplishments at or above the conference level, including advancement to regional or national competition, regional or national titles, school records, and undefeated seasons. It is here in Denton, on this beautiful campus, that our inductees impacted the TW athletics program forever, particularly with their success in softball. They threw, hit, or ran like nobody else. The student athletes around them played probably a little bit better, dug in just a little bit harder because of them. The word excellence was and still is a part of their makeup. It really is in their DNA. It's a fabric of their lives. They know no other way to live. We are most proud that they wore TWU on their jerseys and they truly do bleed maroon. Now, in your program, you can read all about Jamie Ingram and Teresa Flores and the 1978-79 softball team. 
There is no doubt that they belong in our prestigious hall, and now we're enshrining them so that forever we will remember them for their accomplishments. Now, I've had the distinct pleasure of knowing our individual honorees from the very first time they came on this campus. I can honestly say it was a joy and a pleasure to watch Jamie and Teresa compete at the highest levels. I cheered them on. I was glad that they played for us instead of the other team. They were truly outstanding athletes, but as an administrator, it really was just such a relief because they were amazing students. They cared just as much about their academics as they did their athletic accomplishments. They were leaders in our program and dedicated student athletes. Ladies and gentlemen, our first honoree this evening is Jamie Ingram. After attending Glenn Junior College, Jamie played two years at TWU from 2001 to 2003. She accumulated both offensive and defensive honors, and she holds the school record for most run, home runs in a season at 14. She actually now shares that record with a current student athlete, Jordan Redeker, who tied that record last year. And Jamie wants Jordan to break it. <laughs> so if you'll please turn your attention to the video screen, let's get to know Jamie from her former coach and her former athletic trainer. Well, I had, uh, I had rec recruited and coached many Canadians through my career. And so I had contacts in Canada, and especially where Jamie lived. I was used to coaching Canadians. They are, they are a unique personality. Uh, they are laid back. Uh, their attitude is whatever can be done today can be done tomorrow. And sort of almost a Jamaican type environment of no problem coach, I'll take care of it. And that personality uh, came into a type A coach, very intense, and those two people collided. And at some point, something had to give because I wanted Jamie to play at or practice at game speed so that the game would be slower to her when she got in it. And she wanted just to be that Canadian. It's like so many of my Canadians before, just laid back, respectful, kick back, don't worry about things, I'm under control, I've got my grades, no problem with anything. And when Jamie decided to surrender where she was to what she can get to, she became that All-American. Uh, and she grasped what I was trying to tell her about playing, practicing at game speed. And she was such a smart, smart uh, uh, personality. And she had, like I said, the ability to put herself together. Great hitter, um, became the catcher of the year in the NCAA. Um, she just, she took what she learned and she put it in and she heard it and she just took it to the next level. Uh, and she continues, you know, she's coaching, assistant coach at Blinn now. Actually, the connection at Blinn was her head coach at Blinn right now that she works for actually was a Canadian himself. So he knew Jamie back in Canada. So it was all a, a good mix for me. I knew him from coaching with him in, in, in some clinics. And uh, so we made that connection and we got Jamie in here. And uh, what a dream. Somebody's telling you that you are the best of the best. That you have the best player in the country in that position. Now just think about it. You have 300 and some odd Division II teams, all of them have two to three catchers on their team. And this young person has just won this award for Catcher of the Year in the NCAA. She is considered the best. Now, you know why? Well, again, it's that package that I talk about so much. You have to be the person that people are going to vote for, that, you know, that person that does all those things right that's coachable and has uh, character and ethics and responsibility. Um, and then you put that together with tremendous smarts that Jamie had um, and that she had the ability to lead her team and do the things that she needed to do at the time she did them. And then you put on that that she's a heck of a, a hitter 
and that she would constantly hit the long ball for TW and make a difference. And you have the best catcher in the country. I mean, oh my gosh. I mean, I don't think, I've had all Americans at Stephen F. Austin in here, but I have never had a, a player of a year, in the year in a position. And so that was just phenomenal. It was just, you know, I was almost shocked, to be honest with you, that she had put those kind of numbers up. My biggest disappointment and Jamie, I didn't have her for four years. The other thing that, that I think we overlook with Jamie, and it has to be brought out here, is that she's a goofball. She is absolutely nuts. Um, and that quality served her well while she played. She was uh, always quick with a joke, always quick with a comment to, to lift everybody's spirits. But there's one joke in particular here that I think we have to, we have to address. And I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say that I've never understood this joke. Um, she actually might be the only person who understands it and laughs at it. But the joke goes something to this effect. And, and in her best Canadian accent, she would say, Hey, hey, Chris, why did the skeleton fall off the swing? I'd say, Jamie, I don't know. Because he has no bum. And she would laugh hysterically. And nobody ever understood the whole skeleton bum thing. Um, and typically when you tell a joke, you tell a joke for the amusement of the crowd and everyone laughs and you feel pretty good about yourself. But with this particular joke, Jamie was the only one who ever laughed about it. Um, we would laugh at her laughing sometimes, but I think she was really the only one who ever understood the joke. And I'll say it now, I still don't get it. But if she were to tell it tonight, I'd probably laugh at it anyway. I think. Jamie Ingram is a, an outstanding candidate to put in the Hall of Fame. She was the embodiment of a student athlete and the type of person that, that represented TW well and continues to do so. Um, as a student athlete here, she was an outstanding athlete. We, we can look at her statistics and know she was a great athlete. Um, some of the intangibles that maybe we didn't count on was that she turned into an outstanding leader as well. Jamie was one of those that led by example. She wasn't, uh, she wasn't a, an authoritarian by any means, but she led by example and, uh, and had a, a quality about her that, that her teammates, I think, you know, looked at her almost as that goofball, but at the same time looked at her for stability, and she brought that to this team. Um, you know, her, her sense of humor was also very welcome. You know, she made some difficult times a lot more bearable for everybody. And I, I make fun of her all the time for her ankle injuries, but um, she always kept a pretty good head on her shoulders and, and made the best of it. And our rehab sessions were always full of laughs and, and jokes. Um, you know, I've had the privilege now to continue uh, a friendship with her that, that I can now watch her as a coach and, and see that she shares her passion for the game uh, with her team currently. And, I think those gals that play for her now are very lucky, very fortunate to have a coach that cares about them and is so passionate about the game um, that she brings a lot of, of enrichment to them. On behalf of Canadians everywhere, I'm honored to be inducted into the TW Hall of Fame. <laughs> you know, it's just whatever, Coach. It's just another day. <laughs> oh. But, um, and Chris, thank you for stealing my opening joke. I appreciate it. I mean, wh what do you not get? She has no bum, so she fell off the swing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on, all right? <laughs> but uh, that, that's just, that's, that was part of me. I, I like to find humor, it relaxes me. Um, and yes, sometimes I'm the only one that laughs, but hey, 
Why not, right? You can't laugh at your own jokes. Why tell them? <laughs> Anyways, um, in all seriousness, I'd like to start off saying thank you, uh, TW Hall of Fame Committee, um, the TW Administration, Dr. Stewart, um, my TW family, my Blinn College family, my lifelong friends I've made during this journey, and last but not least, my family. Um, I'm very honored and humbled to be a part of the 34 Hall of Famers that are currently in the Hall of Fame, especially alongside Coach Baker, um, who I, I played for for two years and actually had the honor of coaching with her for two years. Um, also, my teammate, and actually coached you for a year, Teresa Flores, who will be inducted next, and the 1979 team. What a, what a great a great team, and what a great way to remember TW. Um, and I'd also like to congratulate you on your AIAW uh, championship uh, a year before I was born. <laughs> Didn't even know there was softball back then. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> uh, as some of you know, um, I'm not often speechless. Um, I was shy once and then I turned four. <laughs> I don't think my parents had heard me speak much until then, and then I was at a Christmas party, and uh, I stood up on a, a chair, and all of a sudden, I wanted to lead my family, which was quite big at the time, in the singing of Jingle Bells. And the rest is history of my shyness. <clears throat> um, but when Shalise called to inform me of this, I truly was speechless, and I really can't believe I'm actually standing up here today. This is uh, just an amazing, honor and just wow. Wow is what I have to say. But let's start at the beginning. Um, I learned I loved softball way back in the day. I, I'd watch my, my dad, he played, he actually pitched a uh, fast pitch. Um, and I thought, you know, I can do that. I can do that. Well, I quickly found out I'm not a pitcher. I can barely throw front toss, actually. Coach Church will actually attest to that. Um, and then uh, I wanted, I tried shortstop because, you know, I wanted to be involved in every play. Shocking, I know. <laughs> I don't have any control issues, no, you're right. Um, but uh, then I grew up and a little bit out and realized I'm not really that fast to play shortstop. So my coach, uh, Bob Wang, who his wife is here today, who's my other Canadian mom, asked me, hey, you want to try catching? I said, sure. That's, that's involved in every play. That sounds good. So I tried it, loved it, and really the rest is, as they say, history. Um. <clears throat> Growing up, I was very lucky to have a lot of great role models, um, and most of them were coaches and teachers. Uh, they really inspired me uh, to do what I do now. I've always known what I wanted to do. I wanted to coach and I wanted to teach. Um, first of all, I had a, a basketball coach in high school, Todd Lowe. Uh, watching him teach and coach, uh, that was inspiring. And one of his things he said to me was, show me what you can do, don't tell me what you can't. And that's something that I use even to this day. So I thank him for that. And then I, I had a coach growing up who was like a father to me. Bob Lang. Um, he, had, he passed away in 2006, but he gave me this ring right before he passed away. He was like a father to me. Um, it's an Indian carving, hand carved, and it means, a, it's a wolf, and it means a teacher or a leader. And I wear it every day, and I, I think of him every time I do what I do. Um, and I know he's watching over us all the time, and I just want to say, Bob, I strive to be the best person you know I can always could be. I just hope my kiddos love and respect me as much as we loved and respected you. Thank you for always looking over me through the thick and thin. And then there's my parents, who I, uh, I definitely learned my work ethic from. I'm not sure that I've ever seen my mom or my dad take a sick day from work. 
Uh, it's just not an option. Uh, you go. In fact, they used to try, Mom, I'm not feeling very good. That's okay. She used to crunch up a Tylenol, stick it in a on toast and peanut butter and fold it in half and say, here. <laughs> and you'd be eating the peanut butter and you'd hear a crunch. Well, Mom, what's in this peanut butter? And lo and behold, it'd be some Tylenol in there. But she'd say, call me at recess if you're not feeling good still and I'll come pick you up. But I don't think I really ever called her. I always stayed. Um, so thanks, Mom, for, for that. And my daddy couldn't be here today. Um, my mom just been such a great role. We had a 60th birthday surprise party for her uh, a couple years ago. And um, first of all, I can't believe we actually surprised you. She's pretty nosy. <laughs> um, we, had, we had 50 people show up for her. 50 people. Um, mom, if, if, if I have 50 friends that close that would come from everywhere for my birthday when I'm 60, then that would be amazing. So that's just a testament to you. Um, and then Mary, who's my Can other Canadian mom, who's Bob's wife, who I talked about. Uh, just thank you for always being there. They're like my second family. And then, thankfully, Coach Church, who's here today, he, he called. And uh, funny story, my mom was at work in emergency. She's an emergency nurse. And Coach Church called and offered me a scholarship. Well, I tried to call my mom. Well, she's in an emergency. Okay. I tried to call her again. She's in another emergency, okay. And then I called Bob, and I called my dad, and I called Todd Lowe. I said, what do you think I should do? Well, you need to go. You need to take it. That's a great opportunity. I tried to call my mom again. Now they can't find her. She's on a break or something. <laughs> well, I didn't think I was supposed to make anybody wait, so I called Coach Church back and said, okay, I'm coming. Which is funny, because I was somebody that never wanted to leave home. Finally, about 10 minutes later, she called me back. What do you want? I'm busy. I know, I'm making you look so good right now. <laughs> well, Mom? Said, don't call unless the house is down. That's right, don't call unless the house is burning down. Well, okay. <laughs> Guess what, Mom? I'm going to play softball in Texas. You're doing what? <laughs> we'll talk about it when we get home. No, I already told them I'm coming. <laughs> so I'm going. So, uh, so off I went to, to Texas. <clears throat> I had a rare opportunity to play for two amazing coaches and programs. Um, I know Coach Baker, you know, you would have loved to have me four years, but in the absence of that, uh, the, the two coaches that I had an opportunity to play for are amazing. I wouldn't have traded it for the world. Coach Church is, Rick Church is here today with his wife, and um, he's actually who I currently work for also. Um, and when I was at Blinn, it just started a life-changing process for me. Um, and that, Blinn family became a family to me, and I met people from all over that just took me in as family. And what an amazing thing to have family everywhere you go, you just always feel at home. And I just thank all of those people, whether they're here or not, to thank you for making me feel like family. I always ask Coach Church, you know, how, how am I going to repay you for everything you've ever done for me? And his response is always, well, that's okay, just one day, buy me a car. <laughs> Then I came to Texas Women's University and played for Coach Baker. You know, I tried to fit in by being a little bit of a jokester, and Coach Baker, I'm, I'm shocked you didn't tell the story. I did, they cut it. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, what happened was we went, I think we were in Abilene, Michelle's house, is it? Yeah. And uh, I was a junior, and I was, you know, just trying to fit in, and, you know, I like to be a jokester. Well, I'm walking in the house, and all of a sudden, myself and the screen door have quite the meeting. <laughs> and I think I took the screen door down, didn't I? Your whole body was embedded in the screen door. <laughs> my whole body was embedded in the screen door. And I had quite the shock look on my face. But Coach, what you don't know is that I was always trying to do was, was you know, jokester up and fit in, so I just did that on purpose. <laughs> um, so. <clears throat> no, day, no doubt, though, Coach Baker was tough. And thank God for the nine seniors we had. Uh, sometimes at practice, uh, Coach loved to do mass drilling in practice. It's something that we did a lot. Well, she'd give instructions. I'd turn around. Monica, what the heck did 
she just said, <laughs> help me. Monica was our senior catcher when I was a junior. And you know what, Coach? I know what you're talking about now because at practice, I might as well be speaking French sometimes. <laughs> That's what actually what I say. Am I speaking French? I'm not actually sure why you don't know what I'm saying. So I, I know what that feels like. Um, and then one more. Uh, when, when I was a senior, my senior weekend, Chris, I asked her, I said, how am I going to repay you for all the tape you used on my ankles? <laughs> Well, she said, I have an idea. You hit a home run this weekend, and you touch home plate, and you, you do the I am not worthy Wayne's world <laughs> bow. I said, I don't know if Coach Baker's going to go for that. <laughs> but OK, I'll do it. <laughs> well, lo and behold, we're playing Tarleton, and I hit a home run. And I'm running around, third, or running around second base. I thought, you know what, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. This is it. I'm not going to play here again. I'm going to do it. I'm round and third, and I high-five Coach Baker, and I see Chris, black shirt, standing right there. And I thought, I'm doing it. I cleared everybody out, went down on two knees, did the thing, jumped up, hugged Chris, and we both went, well, we better hurry up and get our butts back to the dog. <laughs> And then one more. Coach Baker, uh, when I was a senior, uh, she took Sasha and I to Salem, Oregon for the, the, the All-American um, ceremony. And uh, we fly there, we, we show up at the hotel, and there's my mom. And uh, I'm from Vancouver, Canada, so it was about a six-hour drive for her. And I thought, wow, I was so surprised. I didn't know Coach Baker set all that up for me. Because uh, I didn't know I was getting the, the Catcher of the Year award. So thank you, Coach Baker, for doing that all. That's, that's an amazing thing you did for me. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> TWU, uh, the academic part, was another huge reason why I came. I came on a visit, and wow, what an amazing, amazing place Pioneer Hall is. And I just fell in love with it the first moment I, I, stepped, I stepped on campus. Um, the academics, they, they truly uh, stoked the fire that was my passion for teaching and coaching. Um, and people like Sina Good and Eddie Myers, who I told her today I still use some of her things when I teach my class. Um, this job uh, that I do, I, I coach and I teach, what a, I don't even call it a job, it's a passion. And it's the most amazing thing I get to do with my life every day. It's not a have to, it's a I get to. And the feeling, I, the feeling you know, when you're, when you're coaching somebody, you're teaching somebody, and they look at you like, wow, I can't believe I just did that. That's, I don't know any other feeling better than that. And uh, I thank you, TW, for, for helping me grow into that, into that person. What a, what a great thing it is for me to try to at least pay back the people by, by setting examples for the people that I coach and I teach now. Actually, there's one of them here today. <clears throat> my TW friends, Don, Liz, Chris, Teresa, Emma, my other teammates. When you, when you go to battle with somebody on the field in the 1979 team, you, you know what I'm talking about. You may see them every day, or you may see them once every five years. It's a special bond you share that you'll never, you'll never lose. And I'm so happy that you're here today with me. I love you guys. Um, <clears throat> you always have that tie. There are, those are your true friends. And you athletes in, in the, the, the audience today, what, a, what an awesome thing you have to be able to meet new people. Because not everybody gets that opportunity, so take advantage of it. When I look back at the past 13 years reflecting on what to say today, there will never be enough time or words to truly thank everyone that helped me become the person I am today and the person I'm still becoming. I've always wanted to make people proud of me, and in the process, proud of myself. Always learning, always finding ways to be better in all aspects, all aspects of my life. And this was such a great place to be, and I wouldn't have traded it for anything. So thank you all for making this such an amazing experience. I'm truly honored. Thank you. Our second honoree this evening is Teresa Flores. Teresa is probably known best as one of the most prolific hitters at TWU. 
Her career spanned from 2000 to 2004. She was both respected and feared by opposing teams. Teresa has etched her name in the Pioneer record books as well. She has nearly 20 school records to her credit. Please turn your attention to the video screen and let's get to know Teresa, again from her former coach and also from one of her former teams. I have a really good story to talk about Teresa with her recruiting process because I can remember very clearly sitting um, on the hill with her and her dad uh, at Pioneer Hall, or Pioneer Field I should say, and they were on their way to OSU to uh, get recruited at OSU. She wanted to play for OSU. And uh, I was doing all the right things. I was telling her that, you know, that, you know, she had a coach that knew what she was doing. She had a beautiful facility. She had a great university, had people that would care about her and be that professional to her. And, you know, everything seemed to be okay. And she had, she had a tendency to, at that point to put her head down. And, and for some weird reason, I turned around and I said, you know, Teresa, we will honor your Hispanic tradition. And for some reason, that just keyed up on her, and she looked up at me and she said, Coach, that's very important to me. And that moment on, I got her quickly to the international education, I think it's called now, and she, uh, um, it's history. She loved what she heard from them, what she heard from the university, and uh, we got us all American, and she taught me a lot in the next four years, her and her family, about the Hispanic tradition. And I taught her a lot, of, hopefully, about life and softball. Well, you know, the biggest thing I did for Teresa as a coach is I got her, I got the heck out of the way. Um, she was a unique player. She came in as a unique player. I did not teach her her hitting. Her brothers taught her to that. I just didn't mess it up. I was smart enough not to mess it up. And um, she came in, and she was a workaholic. She would beat me to the field. Uh, she would be there. 45 minutes before practice, hour after practice, hitting, hitting, hitting. And then she'd say, Coach Baker, can I, can I have some grounders? And I'd say, yes, Teresa. And she would take grounders and take grounders and take grounders and take grounders until I'd say, one more time, one more time, one more time. And uh, she would just, she, I never had an athlete with that kind of work ethics. First meeting her and um, as a freshman player uh, coming out and uh, at the first practices of the season and um, uh, being pretty impressed by her. Uh, she was quite the athlete uh, from the get-go. Um, she was just very dedicated and you could see that she had a passion for the sport um, and just an intensity about her and just a drive to constantly do better and want to practice and be on the field at all times. So. Um, yeah, I mean, from from early on as a freshman, you, you knew that she was, you know, going to be good. <laughs> Teresa is a sweetheart. And when, when the, the people at the Hall of Fame get to really meet her, some of the ones that don't know her, she is absolutely a tremendous human being. She would do anything for anybody. But she, she had the ability to keep herself focused for the whole package. She never varied away from doing the right thing, staying away from bad influences. She surrounded herself with excellence. She worked hard. She worked hard in the classroom. She, she was at class. She did what she was supposed to do. So there was never a time as a coach I had to worry about where's Teresa, what is she doing, what is her grades going to be like, is she, supposed to, is she studying. That was never happening with Teresa. She was a, she was a put-together young lady, and she continues to this day to be a you know that that person but she I think the thing that I really love about her she gives back to her community in Corpus Christi and she's still helping young people with softball and um, and teaching them how to grow as people and she you know she's a tremendous human being well I think she's shocked you know I think you're gonna find a person that is so humble that she says tremendously shocked about getting this award because she know she knows coach has been in the Hall of Fame and other great names uh, beside me and I you know I'm not even the level that some of those people are uh, so for Teresa to get into the Hall of Fame she she takes it very seriously and she believes that oh my gosh I, you know I, uh, I how in the world can I get in the Hall of Fame and uh, but it's the very person you want in the Hall of Fame because she stands for 
the very thing that we're after in the Hall of Fame. And that's that, like I said, that whole package of integrity and honesty and responsibility and all those, those keywords that we try to teach young people. She's that person. And uh, for me, I'm just so proud of her. She, uh, she's nervous uh, about, you know, getting up in, in front of crowds because she's not that person. She's not that person. But uh, she'll do a great job, and I'm just so, so proud of her. Uh, I just I, I just don't think that the people understand um, how good of a hitter she was. She was she was something you don't get those type hitters they're natural hitters um, you know and, and I tried to really put her in a box when I coached her because I wanted she'd make these un unbelievable plays at shortstop and I wanted her to make all the plays you know how coaches are and then she would maybe miss a, a play that you thought was kind of easy and I thought you know what in the world am I doing wrong with Teresa you know and I would put her at first base trying to make her into a first baseman which she was a tremendous first baseman but she always wanted to play shortstop when I let Teresa be Teresa I woke up one day and said you know what coach quit coaching her so much let Teresa be Teresa I called her T I said let T be T if she messes up on one okay let it be but she's going to make these phenomenal plays for you and she's going to hit the ball and make a difference in a ball game when i said that as a coach and put her at shortstop and she was just allowed to be teresa and not be so coached she became that all-american player Always have been. Um, can't deny it. It is what it is. Um, but uh, thank you so much uh, to everybody here, and what an honor it is. I'm completely grateful, and uh, again, this isn't anything I ever planned on or dreamt of or anything. But I was telling some of the softball girls that I love Hall of Fame banquets. I love them. Um, I, I get to, for whatever reason, I've been to a lot since. Um, in my lifetime and my mom and dad were in charge of my high school hall of fame and 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 every opportunity i have i always try to go and it never fails i always cry um you know listening to everybody speak and how inspiring it is and what they went through and what each athlete you know goes through to be you know however successful they need to be and and um i truly truly am grateful for this because I, I understand you know one how, how everybody who's involved the committee and and making something like this happen, and two, you know, just what an honor it is to be in front of people and, and have an opportunity to speak. So thank you for this opportunity, and thank you, committee. Um, I really appreciate it. Um, with that being said, uh, I just wanted to say that I did not ever expect to play softball in college. I expected to play basketball. I, and he, my dad and I would, would argue at times, because. There was one, I was probably like seventh grade, and I loved basketball, and I was good at basketball too. And he, he's telling me, you know, that I say you gotta choose, you know, basketball or softball this, this season, and I'm just like, I'm gonna choose basketball. And he's like, well, no, you, you really aren't gonna, you're gonna play softball. <laughs> and I, we argued, and I cried, and I was yelling, and I was like, no, what are you talking about? Because I was really good at basketball. <laughs> softball, I played right field and bench. Right field and bench. Right field and bench. And I, was, I didn't care. I, mean, I was still good at basketball, so what does it matter? I still had that. And, um, you know, I'm really, really uh, grateful that my dad saw something more. And he kept pushing me and pushing me. Because you think you know what you want. You think you know what's going to happen. And, and you don't. And um, I am very fortunate to have some amazing athletic brothers. And, and they all played baseball in college. And, uh, you know, it was, there was something lined up for me bigger than what I thought. But, uh, you know, with that being said, I also told
told myself that I was going to play in the WNBA. And the, the crazy thing is, the reason why I said that is because I had role, role models. You know, the WNBA just came out, you know, the Houston Comets were amazing and they won like year after year after year. And, and you know, so that's something that I could visually see myself doing. And, you know, it's, it's just, it's just crazy what, what, what sports can do and, and what type of uh, motivation it can give you or give a, a young athlete or young woman. And with, with that, the Olympics this summer, how amazing was the Olympics, you know, for, for women in, in sports. And I, I myself, you know, uh, have my nieces and I'm, I'm so proud that they got to see the Olympics and, and how great, and how, how much class they were, they were able to compete with and, and the level that they were at and, and so graceful in everything they did. I'm a little sad that softball wasn't able to be on that platform. Um, but with that being said, it's, uh, it's, it's really something to say for, with the 1979 team. What you're doing and what you've done is, you know, none of, none of that, none of that the Olympics this summer would have, would have happened without women and teens like you to sacrifice, you know, everything you've done. And, and you didn't have any role models. You were, you were pioneers, literally pioneers in what you were doing. And you just did it, and you did it so amazingly. And, you know, anything that we have today is for, because of women like them. And I just wanted to tell them, thank you for all that you've done. And, and please, I mean, coming back to campus, I'm sure they're like, man, we didn't have this, we didn't have that. <laughs> you know, you're so lucky, and, we, and, and you ladies, I'm saying the same thing. I'm sure Jamie and I are like, gosh, oh, you know, this and that. You know, just imagine they didn't have anything, and um, it's because of you. It's because of you. It's because of you that we have what we have, your success. And so I, I just really want to make a point to, to let you know that that's very, very moving to me. Um, I really am grateful. Three reasons, I think, about three reasons that why I was able to succeed in college. Um, one, God. God God has a better plan than we can ever imagine. And I'm very, very grateful that it led me to softball and it got me here to TWU. And just like Coach said, I, I, I Texas Women's University, yeah, let me go there. I can't wait. Like, you know, I'm being from Corpus, like, that sounds like the worst idea in the world. Um, but, you know, once you get here, once you get here, you're like, oh my gosh, it's beautiful, the facilities. And then, you know, I didn't know who Coach Baker was. And she could tell me all day who she was and what she's done. And, and I was just like, maybe, my, my dad and I were like, maybe we should really listen to this lady. You know, she said she's done all these things. And she's so confident in everything she says. And, you know, it's, it's, it's really funny. But it's um, God. God knows. He really does. And I, I really, truly want to thank him um, because he's really taking care of me and giving me the strength to get through it. And being, I know it's not as far as Jamie, but yeah, to me it felt very far being from home. And um, I needed him a lot and he was there. So thank you. Um, also, um, I had three older brothers that I had no choice but to be competitive. Um, I, and you guys stand up. You have to stand up. You have to see my brothers. You have to see how big they are. They're big guys. I mean, from everything to, you know, obviously sports and them beating me up. Uh, but eating, eating was a big thing. Um, it was so bad that, it was so bad that, and they're laughing because they know that, my mom would have to, you know, we're all, like, I'd be outside playing or something, and she'd have to call me in first because, so I can get a plate of food because there's no seconds once they came in. And my brothers would be like, you know, especially if we, we order pizza. If we order pizza, oh, my gosh. You know, it's, so I would get, like, six slices. I'm not kidding, six. And, you know, my brothers would come in later, and they're like, 
dang, Teresa, where's all the food? Give me one. I'm like, no, it's mine. And they're like, give me what you got. Like, I had like a bunch on my plate. And they're like, and so if I had a bunch on my plate, I would lick it. I would be like, you can't have it now. I'm sorry. It ain't gonna happen. And so, I, it was, um, it's, uh, it was, it was really, really fun. And I, I like I said, you know, I knew I was doing something good when, I was playing like basketball with my brothers, and I started beating them um, in basketball. And I was in fifth grade, and they're in high school slash going into college to play whatever, and, and I could beat them. And so I started doing that, and I'm like, well, I'm, I'm going to be a basketball player. And it gave me a lot of confidence um, having my brothers around, you know, and, and rather it was, you know, my big brother hitting me grounders, and I just would tell myself it's just Crystal Bustos hitting to me. And, uh, <laughs> And, uh, and or, you know, my brother Marcus staying up till the middle of the night, hitting with me, hitting with me, and hitting with me, you know, and trying to break down my swing however I can to make sure I didn't have any holes in it. And, and you know, it's just the passion that, that and the support that I had from my brothers was, was rare. And, you know, they never kicked me out whenever they were doing stuff. They always let me tag along like that little sister could. And, and uh, I was very fortunate, and I really am grateful for all they did and everything that they still do for me. So thank you, brothers. You know that 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 family, that support I I had, and um, I am very grateful for having a great father. And and if you know me, and if you knew me during during college, you knew that. My dad was there, right there the entire time, and um, like I said, he he knew, he saw, he saw, he saw what I could be and what I could do, and and um, if I ever needed anything, I didn't even have to ask. He was right there, and he could read my mind. Let's go take ground, let's go, and he, we'd go, and, and um, uh, Dad, I want to thank you. Good. And uh, my mom, um, you know, I, I, she had to deal with my brothers. She had to deal with me. And, you know, I'm, now I'm, I'm not going to say I'm the cleanest person, but I, I definitely do try to make sure everything's good. But we didn't do anything, you know. And my brothers were horrible and messy and <laughs> nasty and stinky and, and, and just everything, all the patience that she had. And, you know, being there and supporting. And she just wanted me to be happy. Always wanted me to be happy. And um, I'm happy. I'm so sorry. Just fuck. I'm so sorry. Uh, but, you know, that's my family, and uh, they're special. And uh, I'm very, very, very lucky. And also, uh, I'd like to thank Francis and Marie. They, they actually are relatives of mine. They live here. And um, they were supportive of me as well. And uh, I want to thank you and, and everyone, all my friends and Tori that's here and supporting me and Amara. And I mean, all you guys, I just what great support TW has. And, and you know, all the people here. And, and uh, you know, the very, very lucky. If you're a student here, you're very lucky to be here. And, and you have no idea how special the people are around you. Your professors, um, you know, it, it's the, 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 the athletics. You guys have it so good, <laughs> so good. I mean, I've been fortunate enough to, to coach at a couple universities and, you know, Division One, Division Two, Mid-Major Division Two. Um, I mean, Mid-Major Division One, and, and all I could always say is like, TWU was so I was like, man, we live it up at TWU. We went to the best hotel. We stayed in the best hotels. We ate good. You know, our uniforms were looking nice. Our facilities were top, top notch. I mean, you have no idea compared to, especially compared to the other Division Twos. You are in a wonderful place with amazing support. You're not second. You're you're looked at as first. I mean, you're not going underneath a guys' basketball team 
or guys baseball team who never wins, but yet you're better, and it's just, it's just, you know, you don't have to deal with any of that stuff. You have no idea how great you have it, and I really hope and truly hope you see what what an opportunity it is to be here and what is happening in front of you every day. You have no idea, but you're getting shaped to be successful later on, and you're becoming leaders, and you don't even know it, and um, you really need to make sure you take that opportunity to, you know, use your platform right now, which is a successful student athlete, and, and share that with other people and, and not just, you know, kind of, well, I'm here, I'm in college, I'm having a good time, and this is fun, and then walk away from it. You know, take advantage of, of what you can do with that platform and, and how much you can help other people and young women just like you who need role models. You know, they do. They need role models, and you're such great women, and you're here, which proves that. And um, so I, 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 I see that now, and, and I just didn't realize how ready I was for the real world until I left. And um, I thank that to everyone here at TWU and all the family. So thank you for that. And, and you know, there's like Dr. Good and Dr. Myers and, and Dr. French, Coach Palmer, which I don't know if she's here, but if she is, you know, Beth Palmer, um, you know, she was a big inspiration to me. And Dr. B, who's lo no longer with us, um, Dr. Hughes, I mean, amazing, amazing women, amazing faculty, personnel, um, just very, very fortunate, very lucky, very lucky. Um, Coach Baker, uh, your passion, your fire, your heart, your fight, uh, your knowledge from the game, for the game, you know, has tr transcended many players in, you know, in, in your career that you've touched. And, and I know, I know that I can speak for all of them and, 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 and how lucky we were to be touched by you. And if I am one-tenth of you as a coach, then I know I've done a good job. And uh, you truly are a legend, a living legend right now. And if you don't know who she is, you will. <laughs> Cause she, well, obviously you do now. Um, she is rarity. There's nobody like her. And um, you know, you love you loved it. You know, I was just saying, you, the love hate relationship at times when you when you play with her or play under her. And uh, it's but you love her. You love her for how much she pushes you. Although she doesn't think she doesn't mentally. Um, abuse anybody, but uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. She, she's, she, everything she did, she had a purpose. And, and again, now that I'm older, you see that purpose, you see those reasons, and um, it's as clear as day. And so if your coaches are pushing you, ladies, you know, just know it's, it's, it's all going to be there when it's all over and said and done. So, but Coach Baker, um, thank you for, for everything. Thank you for everything you do for TWU, and thank you guys for everything you've done for me. Thank you. Yes. You know, um, when I was here, just like you know, Coach said, I, I never did all this. I never worked hard so I could be an All-American. I didn't work hard so I could be All-Conference. I really just truly worked hard so we could win and we would win a national championship and we didn't. Um, <laughs> San Angelo did, or St. Mary's did, unfortunately. Uh, but, that's my point, but. <laughs> in, yeah, I, I, hey, I, it stuck in my head, we didn't win. And that's, that's all I cared about, that's all I ever, I wanted to be the, the person that came through when my team needed. Um, I didn't want to let them down. And um, I, uh, I, I hope I was able to help them out, and we did get one uh, conference title, so that that was great. I, I like that. But again, it's uh, truly something to win a national title, ladies. And you, I, I I can't get over how amazing of a feat that was. If I could tell, if I could do, how can I say? If I could go back in time and know what I know now, that would be to embrace failure. Um, so I know that sounds weird, but you really need to embrace failure. Uh, when I, especially in the game of softball, uh, I mean, you're going to fail more than you succeed. And 
most people, what they do is, you know, they fail and they mentally they take themselves out of it. And by the time, I mean, they probably go the whole game, you know, never making an adjustment because mentally they they think they they're focusing on this or that. And really, they should have said, okay, I did this wrong, and now I'm going to focus on this. And once I learned, which I always honestly didn't learn until my senior year, to embrace failure, um, I wasn't able to be the player I needed to be. And um, with that being said, I tried to make sure that I never had one at bat that was more important than another at bat. Um, I always try to make sure that I always try to make sure that I didn't focus on the situation. If there was bases loaded, to me it was no more important than the bat that I had prior to that. Um, and I really made sure to use that and help help me be successful. Um, and it, it helped a lot. So embrace your failure. Don't be afraid of it because your failures is what gives you the mental toughness to be successful. Because if you didn't fail, then how would you know how much and how hard you needed to fight? You know, if you don't want to be in this losing position, it's because you've been there. You know what it feels like to be there, and you're not going to be there. So that's the only way for you to be successful. So that's one thing I would say. Second thing I would say is don't live with regret. Um, it's the biggest price you'll ever pay. You know, I tried my best never to live with regret, especially my time here at TWU. Um, but as a player, you know you have to stay, you have to have the same mental approach. Um, you know, especially in you softball players, I'm speaking to you guys, same mental approach, same mental approach. If one day you come out all excited, the next day you come out all flat. You know, how are you supposed to be consistent when mentally you're never consistent yourself? I would say work on trying to figure out your mental approach and make sure it's consistent with what you can do to be successful. And you do that, you'll be, you'll be great. There's probably only one regret that I have um, as, a, as a hitter here. And it was my senior year, and I was doing really well. And, um, you know, I, uh, I honestly, overall, I believed you could, you could, every day was a day to get better. And you could get better every day. And so that's what I tried to do. Um, and hopefully, and obviously, it, it seemed to work out in the end. I didn't know if it was, um, but I'm, I'm very grateful that everything did work out um, for me in my he here in my career here. Um, TW has not only shaped uh, my softball career, but it's shaped my life. And uh, I'm very grateful for, for everyone here. Um, thank you. Um, team for everything you've done and sacrificed. Um, you are truly special and it is an honor to be getting inducted with you guys. I couldn't imagine a better uh, class to be inducted with. Jamie, you know, we have some great times. You had some great times and um, uh, Jamie and I were pretty close um, when she was here and so it's, it's, this is, this is perfect. This is just a perfect night and, and um, thank you Hall of Fame Committee for throwing such a beautiful event. Um, getting a chance to relive one of the best at bats I've ever had, and which is playing softball here for Texas Women's University. Thank you. Our third and final honoree is actually an entire team. It's our first team of distinction, the 1978-79 softball team. Also known, I've been told, as the team with Personality Plus, won the university's first ever softball national championship on May 27, 1979. And they came through the loser's bracket in the tournament, playing without their head coach, and then defeating a powerhouse team in back-to-back -back games. Let's watch this video and we'll hear from another TW Hall of Fame member who was there with them, along with one of their beloved mentors. Of course, it was just mind-boggling because we got there by beating UCLA twice. And so, you know, to be able to accomplish that and to move, we had had softball and so forth and we had had, you know, fairly good competition, but to be the best in the country with a record of, I believe, I want to say 78 and 6, 
uh, you know, the publicity, the excitement, the uh, respect, I guess we would say, for our athletic program. And we were always an outstanding university, but to have this accomplishment was very impressive, really, when you think a little TWU going against UCLA, <coughs> UCLA twice, and I forget who else we bit, but they were all bigger than us. The whole crux of the matter was that I had been coaching previously and I decided that I didn't know enough. <clears throat> so I went to the um, professional, they were amateurs, like Rebestus, Connecticut Rebestus softball teams all over the country to look for a coach. And I said I would make them an offer they couldn't refuse, which was basically I would handle everything else. I'd worry about the video, the SID, the money, the bands, the lunch, all this person had to do was coach. So. To TW came Donna Terry to do this. And in the previous year, which would be, I guess, 77, 78, they came in fourth. Well, in 78, 79, we qualified again, but Donna came to me and she said, I have an opportunity to play in China with the professional Connecticut Falcons the same week as the national championship. So I blinked. And she said, David Brewer, who had worked with us and had uh, coached. Uh, a little bit third, you know, and so forth, and had pitched uh, batting practice. He would coach, and she was going to appoint two students, Willie, the catcher, and Misty, the shortstop, to sort of help coach, and I would handle the money, my best thing to do. And I said, okay, so we went. So we won the first game, but we lost the second game. And in my opinion, we had too many coaches. We had Dave saying go right, and Misty saying go left. And Willie's saying, well, we better not bunt, and I, this will not do. So I called him together in the motel, and I said, look, Dave's going to coach. Whatever he says, I don't care. Willie, you, pe you catch. Misty, you play shortstop. Leave the coaching to David. So we went back out, and we won some more, and then we beat UCLA, won nothing, and we had to play him again. And the thing I remember the ver most, Naveen, was the very last play of the game, which, in my opinion, was a wild pitch. But in any case, the batter swung at it. And so it went rolling back to the back fence. And Willie Val, the first baseman, said, you know, she felt it was all slow motion that Willie was moving so slowly after this ball, which he finally got and uh, threw to first base. And we were the, we were the champions. And of course, uh, that was pretty exciting to be able to do that. It, it goes to the, uh, the resilience of that team and their own internal capabilities because they were going out to do battle with their coach in China, really, their main coach. And not that Dave was not qualified, but he was not, you know, the coach. So to be able to do that was pretty impressive, really, in my mind. But I did not realize that they had not been scored upon before. And to beat them twice, back-to-back -back games like that, and I keep thinking about UCI with, I don't know how many thousands and thousands and thousands of students. I don't know if they had scholarships at that time. We had just a few little academic scholarships. I'm not sure whether UCLA, I have a feeling they had athletic scholarships by that time or you couldn't put powerhouses together like that. So uh, to beat this quality of a team, and we actually had to beat some others to get up there, and in a record of 78 and 6, we were beating many of the top teams in the, in the country. Of course, we had a fall season at that time and a spring season, so therefore, uh, clearly we played more games. I don't know what they play now, but probably half that many or maybe a few more. But. Uh, you know, it was pretty outstanding. What I remember is I had most of them in class. But also even more interesting is I had a graduate student who got permission from their coach to do her thesis the year they won the national, which is most unusual for a researcher to luck out like that. But she was interested in leadership. And the question that she was studying was, what should the coach do? in terms of leadership, and what should the players accept the responsibility for leadership. And it was kind of interesting, and she got the data all finished and done before they went to the regionals and certainly before the nationals. And Donna was a very authoritarian coach, you know, made all the rules, all the whatevers. But she got really intrigued with the finding because the players said there were some things they thought they should have been in charge of. and things she was responsible for. And believe it or not, she bought into it. And so when the invitation came to go to China with her team from Connecticut as a pitcher, 
they told her, go ahead. You know, she didn't bat and she won the pitcher with them and she taught them and they decided who was responsible for what. And so she'd go to China and they'd win there and they'd go up to Omaha and win there. Miss Kuhn kind of came along as the grandmother of it all and they shared the responsibilities and it worked. Well, it was kind of interesting because it wasn't our first national championship in sports. Track and field had kind of dominated the national scene because we won, I don't know how many national championships uh, with track and field. And so this was our first team sport to participate at that level and come home the national champions. And we bragged about it and we still brag about it for, for years, yeah. And the most interesting thing to me is how the membership of that team truly lived out the concept of team or family because they still are. When they would come in this area, they begin bringing children with them, you know, the whole family as a part of it. So that they were just an extraordinary opportunity for our university to brag and, and still brag about them. They just loved one another. I don't know people's definition of the word love. I, I love chocolate and I love sometimes the cowboys and I, you know, various and sundry things and I love these young people. So I looked up in the dictionary the word to appreciate. Maybe that's what I mean if I say I love you. And the definition says to esteem the full worth of. And so that's what I can say truthfully about every member of this team. I loved them and that means I esteemed their full worth and what they have become has been an honor for us as well. our team of distinction, 1978-79 softball. Outfielder, Pam Brown. Come on up, we're gonna come up individually and get their plaques on this way. Outfielder, Pam Brown. Catcher Lisa Burton.
<laughs> Outfielder Diane Dillon. Truly the woman who has kept this team together. You're very welcome. Thank you. Third base and pitcher Jan Finch. regulars at our softball games locally. Yeah. <laughs>
brought props. Yes, I did. Thank you. You're very welcome. Okay. Thank you. You're up. Well, as a famous um, softball player once said, breathe. <laughs> I'd like to say thank you to the Hall of Fame committee for this great honor. Um, it takes a team to win the national championship, and we have quite the team. I'd like to thank Ms. Jo Kuhn for her love and her support throughout. Yeah. for her love and support throughout the years and for going out and finding Miss Terry and hiring her. I'd like to thank Dave Brewer for all of his leadership and his loyalty. Well done, young man. <laughs> I'd like to thank God for bringing us here today and for an answering all of our prayers during those hard practices and all those games. And also, I would like to thank um, Coach Bakes for continuing the um, tradition of excellence throughout the years. Thank you. And that, that tradition of excellence pretty much started kind of one weekend, we were invited to a softball tournament that we were supposed to win. We didn't. <laughs> what happened? We were um, kicked out or we lost in very early on a Saturday morning. So that left the whole weekend for Miss Terry to come up with ways to convince us <laughs> to have more self-confidence <laughs> and to become a strong team. That she did. <laughs> it was a beautiful um, Monday afternoon and we were supposed to go outside and practice. No. Not that day. We stayed in the old gym and we ran drill after drill after drill. And when you were tired, she found another drill. <laughs> and she, she actually titled that practice the wrath of God practice. <laughs> One drill I remember very fondly was you were supposed to sidestep while, yep, while touching your fingertips to the um, gym floor. Every line of that gym floor was taught, touched. Most of us had finished the drill, but one little player who was just crying, she had tears running down her cheeks and her quads were burning and before you know it there goes Pam Brown to join her before you know it again there goes the rest of the team to join her and we brought that teammate to the finish line that was the time we became a strong team no longer were we going to allow a teammate to be left behind. If I didn't get the hit, Cindy Capistrand got the hit. If, if the um, opposing batter got a hit, actually connected to the ball, whew, they had it. The outfield, the infield, no ball was going to be um, in between them. 
And after that drill, I looked around and I didn't see kids from all across the country, from California, from Michigan, from Florida, from Michigan, from Oklahoma, from Michigan, <laughs> <laughs> from Louisiana, from Michigan. Well, there were five of us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and even we had, we allowed a few Texans in the <laughs> team. No longer were we those kids. We were that Texas team, that dreaded Texas team. And that's when we became a unit. In February of 1988, Miss Terry had stepped down from her Cal Berkeley um, position. Her health was failing and her sister um, took her to Sam Houston tournament because Cal Berkeley softball team was playing in the tournament. And I had flown down just to spend some time with them. And believe it or not, it was a cold, wet, chilly day during the, the game. And so her sister was sitting in the driver's seat of the um, team van, Miss Terry was in her shotgun seat, um, that's the second passenger seat, and I was in the middle row second seat, and we were watching the game together. And you know, every time one of the Cal Berkeley players made a uh, good play or a hit or a pitch, she named every one of you. She was seeing her Texas team and not her California team. And I remember her seeing um, a third, um, a grounder to the third base person and whipped it to first and she said, yeah, jam. And long toward the end of the game, it was a really close, um, game. They needed a quick out. They needed um, a strike out. So this pitcher throws this awful, awful pitch. It just whooped down on the, off the table. One of Ruth's pitches. <laughs> and the batter swung so hard she broke her back. I mean, it was, it was kind of remarkable. And Miss Terry said, yeah, Ruth! But there was no group pitching that day. There was no Karen Maziota wandering the outfield that day. Jan didn't play third. She was seeing our Texas team throughout that whole game. And without even, even looking at me, she said, Miss, do you think they'll ever forgive me? And, of course, I said yes, because I had graduated from TWPT school, and without going through the practices and having been a member of that team, I wouldn't have had the self-confidence to do that. And she wanted to give us more than how to win a softball game or a softball tournament. She wanted to give us tools and to develop a strong inner core. And, so, and when we are faced with challenges in life, we could have the tools. And you know what? I want you to look at my teammates. We have successful businesswomen. Many of them own their own small businesses. We have two brave firefighters, one honorable um, police officer. We have admired, admired teachers and coaches. 
and we have a military hero. tonight for the first time and Misty said and others thanks for continuing the tradition here but I think you ought to know that Coach Baker was on the very first team we had in 1972 she came to me and she said I want a softball team and I said go find eight other people <laughs> so she goes and she finds eight other people well, we were playing fast pitch, so you need a pitcher, of course. So, come 15 little children that she had gathered up. Is there a pitcher here? No? I said, all right, you 15 line up. Can anybody get it over the plate? Well, there was a player by the name of Bonnie Helderman, and she was awesome. <laughs> now, those of you who know softball know that somebody throwing it like that, we had no second baseman, right fielder, center fielder, first baseman. Everybody moved over <laughs> so that when she hit this ball, there'd be somebody there. The thing that was so impressive to me <clears throat> when I saw these pictures of Jamie and Teresa, that it would be possible to have a softball team that had little blue shorts that they sewed their own stripes on. And that was our first uniform. We won the national, as you notice that, we had actually two sets of uniforms. We played 78 and 6, 90 some games, 80 some games, with these two uniforms. And I would be venturing to guess now with the teams that we now have, I don't know how many you have, Teresa, but I bet you have more than two or did. The other thing that I noticed the difference is we have batting cages, places to practice your batting. Well, we had that too. It was in the swimming pool <laughs> of the old gym. And we simply built the thing up in the middle. And of course, you know, a swimming pool is slanted, so you had to have something built up in the middle. 
And the battle would stand here, and the pitcher would stand on this little island, and heaven forbid they lost their balance, you know, we'd have never recovered from it all. <laughs> but in any case, we toddled on. From those beginnings with Donna and with these young women became the start of what has continued now. And what I'd like to say is all every one of these people tonight came up and said, thank you, Miss Kuhn, for what you did for me. And as I was visiting with them, and some I hadn't seen with many years, I thought to myself, no, you have it wrong. Thank you for what you did for me. Many of us who teach and coach, and we try and do the best we can for our students, but we lose a lot of them along the way. And we look back and say, if I could have just done this, or if I could have just done that. But these people, as Misty said, they didn't just stop. They went on to be talented, wonderful professionals, all the different jobs, and with character and with resolution. And so I want to say to them, thank you, and congratulations to you and to us. Thank you. Members of the 78 79 team who could not be with us this evening, you saw a lot of them on the video. There are four individuals who have been enshrined in our Hall of Fame already. One of them is the pitcher on that um, video, pitcher Kathy Aronson, also pitcher Kathy Van Wyck, catcher that threw out at the plate was Willie Rucker, and of course, our beloved head coach Donna Terry. Also part of the team, um, but unable to be here this evening, at third base, Lisa Slate, catcher Tara Todd Johnson. Uh, you saw her running the bases, outfielder Sue Redding, and outfielder Bobby Dotson. Again, all members of the 78 79 team. Ladies and gentlemen, let's just one more time round of applause for our Hall of Famers. To close our program this evening, I'd like to welcome Leah Kuehl, who's been asked to speak on behalf of today's Pioneer Student Athletes, and to finish off our program. Good evening. As Shalee said, I'm Leah Kuehl. I'm a senior soccer student athlete and a member of the Hall of Fame Committee. On behalf of my fellow student athletes, I would like to once again congratulate the new Hall of Fame members. What we've experienced this evening is truly inspiring, and it's been an honor to walk down memory lane with you. All of us are working hard each and every day to make our own wonderful memories and to achieve such greatness. And I know that one day many of us will join you in the Hall of Fame. I would like to thank you, Dr. Stewart, and all the families and friends joining us today and sharing the joys and accomplishments of our honorees. Thank you to my fellow um, Hall of Fame committee members who made this evening possible. And now to conclude our program, I would like to invite the Pioneer Voices on the stage to lead us in singing the TW Alma Mater. You'll find the lyrics printed in your program as well as displayed on the video screen. Thank you. Thank you. 